My, my theory, and I'm not going to do anything too formal as far as presentation, I'm just going to talk through a couple of points. But I think that the three things that I see making it so that manufacturers are ready to move from a series of sort of highly siloed point solutions, I've got my process flow thing, I've got my manufacturing execution thing, I've got my inventory management thing, I've got my machine monitoring thing. I think that's going to disappear and it's all going to be platform and pluggable pieces going into that. The magic's not in saying that it's going to happen. The magic is saying when it's going to happen and what are the prerequisites. So, I, you know, a lot of people have had this opinion. It's not just me. I do. I, I think that the things that are changing now and making it more favorable a marketplace for that don't necessarily start with technology so much as they start with customer expectations. So when it comes from Corning, when it comes from Panasonic and when they have something that they want out of a set of systems and the way those systems will work with each other. I think that has a huge impact on what vendors are willing to push and what vendors are willing to support. And to be honest, the extent to which vendors are willing to get outside of their own product and work with other vendors products. So in consumer land, that's very easy because we have a huge swath of people that, you know, all have a supercomputer in their pocket. They're expecting that they can access the Android store. They can access the Apple store. Theoretically, if you buy into Apple, everything's going to work together cleanly and smoothly. Uh, if you buy into Android, you're going to have openness, right? So you have your, your options of which playground you want to play in and which universe do you want to be bought into. In the industrial world, there's no equivalent of either. You end up with, you, you buy what you thought was a walled garden and everything works, and most of it doesn't work, whether it's a company that got acquired by the vendor and never really got all the way assimilated into the machine, or whether it's you know, individual point solutions for, like, like I said, those one-off applications, but they were designed to solve the thing they were designed to solve, not to exist in this ecosystem. And, you know, it's a smaller number of people working on manufacturing than consumer tech, and it's a smaller, uh, smaller pool of companies. So the idea that you're going to immediately be able to work with potentially competing products at the customer site is very off-putting to companies that are trying to kind of enter the space with new technology, do something interesting. So that's expectations, right? The users aren't dumb. The manufacturing is not special. These problems with getting to platform and getting to interoperability and understanding what a, a product inside an ecosystem might look like, we have in manufacturing the same problems as education, the same problems as healthcare, the same problems as all these other industries where integration of disparate individual problem solving type tools they're not coming together into a platform. So we like to think manufacturing is special. Every manufacturer likes to think that they're special. But luckily, the problems of interoperability and integration are actually being solved both inside and outside of manufacturing at a lot of different places, right? So bringing smart users who have an expectation from the consumer space and are seeing you know, problems at their bank, problems at their hospital, problems with their doctor, and seeing that in, in the manufacturing space and looking at this, this is great and it works by itself, but it would be so much better if it worked with these other things next to it. That set of expectations over you know, a pretty long period of time is going to completely change how people buy software and product and monitoring and everything else in the manufacturing space. Personally, I think a lot of that will be generational and it's basically going to be kids who are used to using a computer become manufacturing purchasing agents and they assume that I can browse the digital catalog, reach you via chat, uh, talk to you at weird hours, have everything documented, see a video on YouTube, and I'm not necessarily gonna have to interact with a person at all, but then when I do interact with a person, you know, I want them to know everything about all the stuff that I've already learned about separately on, on the background. So the expectations piece, it's not an accident that that's coming first. I think that's the biggest piece that's going to change, you know, the platformization. The second piece is about infrastructure. So the lunch talk about common data dictionaries and common data models, that's an infrastructure piece. Anything that needs to be standardized or needs to be normalized or needs to be made, you know, it's, it's background stuff. So whether it's information management and handling or whether it's actual technology management and handling. So things like what's an acceptable Wi-Fi protocol for the, for the, the factory floor where it's actually going to be better suited to uh, an environmentally unkind space for, for Wi-Fi. All that stuff has to build up over time before you're going to get to, yes, let's all have a platform and have the pieces work together. And infrastructure, so standards and best practices and 
uh, some of that expectation stuff, those develop really, really slowly in the background over years and years and years and years and years. And you don't see any product yet, right? While that's developing, you see no meaningful progress. And you see people upset about the current state and you see people that are trying to chip away at the standardization problems. And until the standard is done, then the product doesn't come out. And so the, until the product comes out, the customer is still stuck saying none of this stuff works together. But the way that that works is the infrastructure piece is the, the big giant piece underneath the bottom of the iceberg. And then the product you see at the end where I'm buying it and I'm ready to put this in place in the factory, that's the tip of the iceberg, right? But instead of it being, you know, the iceberg is all developed at once. We have to get that whole bottom, the base of the iceberg before you, the customer, ever sees anything at the tip. So the very, very, very slow, long, it's not a long tail, it's like a long beginning. And then you see the tail where everything jumps off and all of a sudden, uh, massive adoption. You saw the same thing with, for example, CNC adoption. Uh, the United States and Germany took 35 years to, before I don't know, three quarters of CNC machines were CNC, or three quarters of machine tools had been CNC. It was back in the 80s. The same thing happened in, in China, and it took about 10 years for China to go from 85% or from 85% manual to 85% CNC was only about five years after the same thing took 15 to 30 in uh, the first economies that did that. So it's the same exact thing with the infrastructure. The infrastructure looks like nothing, then it jumps off on a really sharp peak, and everybody forgets that it took a really long time to get there. And that's good because then product gets developed. But the product that does develop as the infrastructure is building up is often really immature. So you'll be buying things and if you're the customer buying it, you feel like, why am I here being the test subject? I just want to make stuff and I really don't want to be the uh, live test of whether this product is actually going to do what it's supposed to. So you know, no offense to anybody that's on this show floor, but everybody here is thinking pretty far ahead, right? So thinking far ahead means that there will be some core set of features that work well and there will be other core features that aren't there yet. And there'll certainly be peripheral features that simply don't exist, not because they're not good peripheral features to have, but because they're not part of that core needle moving functionality. And the customers who take, you know, the absolute bleeding edge pain are going to absorb a lot of the pain and difficulty of the product development. The customers who take maybe not quite the tip of the spear, but the next round of adoption, they're going to have an easier time because they can follow the example of who did it well before them but they're also going to have less of an advantageous position when bargaining with the vendors. So you can't beat up on a vendor if the vendor's already mature and they've already got a bunch of other customers. Once the customer is all the way mature, or once the vendor is all the way mature and it's now a commoditized product, you don't really have a say at all because the price is what the price is, it's a commodity product, the market is basically a price taker, and that's where we want all this stuff to be. You know, AI will eventually be commoditized, but that could be 50 years from now. Machine monitoring is likely to be all the way commoditized within the next three to five years. And at that point, that's good as a product buyer because you look at the market and you say, I have many, many options, they do many different things, there are new features and functions available all the time from each of these vendors, and I can buy on reputation, I can buy on feature set, I can buy on price, I can buy on support, I can buy on whose, whose agents I like the most. And you have all these options at your disposal because you've reached commoditization. But that product maturity is the end of a long journey. So for machine monitoring, where I'm you know, most familiar, that maturity came after CNC becoming a thing in the late 70s and CNC seeing wide adoption through the 90s and machine monitoring being based first on you know, hardwired connections and then being based on APIs and software connections straight to the control. And there are still interesting things happening in the machine monitoring space, for example, but those interesting things that are happening are building on a huge amount of foundational infrastructure that had to be built up over decades. And so looking for a novel, interesting, dynamic solution that is really, really forward looking isn't going to happen in the product that has now already come to market based on decades of development and a huge depth of underlying infrastructure. So what I want to conclude with is basically that we're here, we're shopping for product, we're looking at product, we're selling product, we're talking about product. But what I like about this event and what I like about having conversations with all of you and the people that have come here and the conversations I think you should keep pressing while you're here are how do you have it always at once? How do you have the customer expectations developing towards what are, what are the next people that are gonna take my job going to be expecting from my job? What are the things that I find a huge pain point but a solvable pain point that these companies and us are gonna to fix together? 
What are the things that are missing from the infrastructure and need to be put in place? How will those solve more than one pain point, but a whole bunch of pain points? And then what's the product look like and how far along the maturity path is it? And how do I get to where I'm hitting the right spot of I'm buying product that is mature enough for my manufacturing needs and for my risk tolerance for that new product while still pushing the needle and pressing the vendors to do more, do better, continue to roll out new product and feature, and to continue to keep one eye on what's the, what's the big picture feature gonna look like as far as infrastructure and expectations go. So tie the product, the infrastructure, and the expectations together, and that's what is great about this event, and it's a conversation that I'm, I feel privileged to be a part of here at the, at the conference. So thanks everybody for listening.